So I guess when I first came back to Christchurch post-quake, having, having lived here before and not having been here during the earthquakes, I was, I was just so struck by what I knew of the trauma that people had been through and the fact that that was being compounded by this demolition process and the sense of loss that it was kind of amplifying. There was a high level of disposal and hurried demolition. In Christchurch there were between 10 and 15,000 homes that were needing to be demolished. Some of those were being salvaged but many of them were being taken down by digger in a hurry. The market for salvaged materials was flooded. Um, the use of them was probably quite limited in some regards and so there wasn't the drive, the financial reward at the end of the salvage process to, to, support, the, you know, to support that activity. I started to think about what, what was another way that we could show how the materials of, of just one house were reusable. So Whole House Reuse is a, a one-off project aimed to show the value of the materials within a typical residential dwelling. We aim to show the value of those materials because they are so often disposed of in a way that, that is concerning. We started off by looking for a house that we could fully deconstruct. We wanted something small, um, manageable and something that seemed typical um, of a New Zealand home. We started with the planning and the execution of the deconstruction and so that involved us working with Jamin, the, de the demolition company, um, with Sylvan Salvage, the salvage company, and so Kate ran the deconstruction with a team of about 30 volunteers and this professional salvage crew. We took the house down carefully over a period of about 10 days piece by piece and then that was all taken and put into storage. Then it was catalogued as it and sort of measured and documented. We had some very um, difficult decisions to make in terms of how to catalogue things. The rule all along was that everything was to be saved so it wasn't a question of whether to keep it or not, it was just how to label it or put it alongside other um, materials. I didn't really know whether to completely believe you. It was quite an emotional thing to hear that someone would put that much interest into a house, let alone it be our house. Images of um, rubbish sites and dumps piled full of things. For me, that emotional idea of those are people's houses and that is um, often, you know, renew or it could be, you know, really high quality resources that are not being used. There's a lot of sadness in that and knowing that things could be done differently. We opened up the design process to people from around the whole country and not just for professional furniture makers but for anyone who was pottering in their back shed or anyone that hadn't even made anything before. So we wanted it to be a really inclusive process. This project allows people to um, connect with the story of reused materials, they have so much value for that reason. They contain a story, a history, um, a sense of culture, of family, of community, um, because they come with marks that have been made over time and they will continue to have those and they just get added to like a story. We asked for people to only create works that had a function or purpose in some way and to think about this home um, and its materials, um, each piece as being irreplaceable or crucial in some way. There are more than 100 people around the country making works for whole house reuse. Um, Auckland, Coromandel, Hastings, Wellington, Nelson, and of course, a lot of people down here in Christchurch. We wanted to harness the creative power of um, people from throughout the nation, but of course, this created some logistical um, issues. We ended up setting off in a van for the North Island with a lot of materials on board. We had a trailer full, roof racks full, van load full, no space for our gear.
I was really amazed by the response from these participants as we dropped materials to them in the oddest of locations. Um, they were just so inspired by the project and wanted to give their time and energy to making something beautiful from them. I think having a piece of Admiral's Way in their hands really brought the project to life for them and um, collecting those works again from them in a few months time was also um, really amazing for me to see what they had done with them. The creativity that is out there and the, uh, the sparking of ideas that people seem to uh, be able to, to have when faced with the challenge of not um, where do we dig a hole and get rid of this stuff, but actually how do we give this stuff a new life. Watching people turn stuff that would otherwise be wasted into, into new functional um, things with a, a life and a future of their own. That's been very exciting. For this project, I wanted to um, take the materials from that original house and work with them with a lot of reverence and, and almost in a, um, an extreme making, crafting, intricate way, um, just to push the boundaries of, of um, making those materials seem exquisitely beautiful. So, people, so it sparks people's thought processes about materials. Instead of seeing them as rubbish, they start to see them as something really precious. We are making a small building um, called the Cocoon. The idea of um, making a tiny space for somewhere like Christchurch, you know, for a family in Christchurch who's lost their home, a tiny space that sort of represents a little bit of the essence of their home. That kind of feeling of, you could take a little piece of the building with you and transform it into something magical. And become, we're doing a prototype, if you like, and it's very much designed to fit this side and a particular purpose, but that purpose is, is a kind of gateway, if you like, so it's the start of something. It would be really nice to be able to create more and help other people build their own little cocoon in their backyard. I, there wasn't really an option for me. I felt like I had to get involved. The chance to work with found materials in a way that's connected to a community seemed really amazing as an opportunity. It's been this, already this process of engaging with the materials. It's been really lovely. It's going to be a very meditative, slow process of taking out all these nails. <laughs> It'll be a number of days, I'd say. It might even be a number of weeks. Um, so my name is Sarah Black and I'm here with a group of folks from the United States. Um, we've been working in collaboration with some students, recent graduates from the Island School of Art. Half of us are from Ohio, Antioch College in Ohio, and half of us are from Chicago. We um, were interested in thinking about the footprint of the home. And what you're seeing here is um, it is a 100, well, very close to 100% scale replica of the footprint of the home, um, using the Rimu timbers from the home. You know, um, if, if it is such a sort of impossibility to reuse 100% of these materials, right? If, it's, if when we build a home, we know that the majority of it is destined for the landfill within, say, you know, a generation, or maybe two, two or three generations, um, then it's worth considering how, thinking anew about how we build our homes. And I think a, a, a project like Whole House Reuse really allows the public and its participants to have really tangible experience of what that means. Uh, so we're making a, like an out, outdoor bath. It's a hot tub kind of-esque, but it's kind of aimed towards more, oh, there's many directions, but like inner city, um, living, so we're, we're, so a family can't get a, a full size spa on their deck or a hot tub, you know, a, a, a bath's a lot smaller and compact and, but easier to move around. Recreating 
rather than just wasting, because waste is a pretty, it's a pretty horrible thing that's happening at the moment, and it doesn't doesn't make sense in my books. Reusing materials, I guess, is something that's I did a, a big year-long project on it, and a lot of people around me that were my classmates as well did a lot of sustainability stuff, um, and it really speaks when a lot of people just see it as they don't think about it and it's in the back of their head and you can kind of just see it pass by um, and especially the times we're coming up to it's time to make a change to stuff that actually has no like damage to our environment or it has no leftovers it can all be reprocessed in some way and I guess that's kind of the move that I want to push and I really want to kind of chase that dream or ideal you could say and just being able to be a part of it and being someone that spreads that kind of word is what it needs to be, like word of mouth and sharing the ideas and going from forward from there. Yeah. I don't know whether you want to keep this top on, but... And then I'll just send you back the grinding. I think you requested one of those pieces. Um, yeah. But it's quite... Um, yeah, it's pretty water. Yeah. For us it was really interesting because it's such a um, concise use of resources. So much goes into a house in terms of energy and materials that to then look at what can come out of it at the other end um, was really interesting. So we were quite excited about trying uh, to see what could be done um, with waste materials. We do appreciate the, the icon of the home but ultimately the home is made up of all of these various materials. They're being dispersed and um, different people are interpreting them in different ways, but ultimately they're all fragments of this one family's memories in this home. And now as a result of their reinterpretation, they're going to produce exponentially more memories. We are able then to reflect on what it means to put so much material into every single building. The significance of that, you know, it's, it's really quite a big deal. And um, perhaps then we can think about whether or not we're building our houses the right way. I find recycled materials hold a lot of the history, of the human history and the environmental history of our lives. And so to me, they're the most precious things we have, the recycled materials. They're more precious than new materials to me. The point of this project is to make tangible the amount of value in the materials that we're currently just throwing away. When we throw away a home, we lose not only its materials, but the energy that went into creating it and the story of the people that lived in that home, its history, and all the value associated with that in our communities. What I hope will come from Whole House Reuse is at the very least raised awareness of what's possible in terms of reuse and also of what the problem is in terms of the quantity of material that gets lost every time a building's life ends.